Uh, yeah, Mark. Uh, I'd just like to uh, firstly acknowledge country, um, all elders past and present, and acknowledge the space we're in. Um, Redfern is the birthplace of the Black Power movement in this country. So I'd like to acknowledge that history for really 50 years. Um, a bit about me. Um, I was born and raised on a Wabakul country in Newcastle. Um, I'm a my, I'm a son of a stolen child and a grandson of a stolen child. Um, these these policies that they they put in attempted to destroy my family's identity, my family's culture, our language, our law, our religion, our spirituality. My mother and my both my grandmother and my mother made it back to their country, and they have strong connection to their country today, and that's the reason why I'm here today. So I just not, I'd like to acknowledge all the my my bloodlines and my strong women in my family. Um, I think the issue of treaty is a very complex issue. Um, I don't think it should be taken lightly at all. I think that there needs to be more discussions like this um, with all, all of our mob um, about coming together and speaking about it because it's something that needs to be spoken about. I think we need to look at treaty. Our people need to look at treaty from a black perspective. A lot of the time it gets the, the concept of treaty gets whitewashed in all this academic and bureaucratic bureaucratic jargon. It needs to be done by our people in our own way, our own concepts, our own our own way, our own knowledge systems. It needs to be incorporated in that way. So I think that treaty for us needs to come from the grassroots and it needs to come from educating our young people about it, because they're they're the future. Our most of our population are under the age of thirty. So our, pe our young people need to be educated on this. Um, I think that when we're, when we're speaking about treaties, we need to speak about, are we talking about domestic treaties or are we talking about international treaties under the Vienna Convention of Treaties, which sets out the guidelines of treaty making between sovereign states. So for me, I would, not, I would never approach this Australian corporate government the way it is now with the, they have not severed ties with Britain. Until that day happens, I don't want to deal with them. I don't want to, because they're an illegal occupant on our country. It's proven in law. If the, the constitutional lawyers would like to research that, it's, it's illegal in law. It's, the, the occupation of their country is illegal. And through processes such as the uh, recognised campaign, they try to legitimise their illegitimacy through Deceiving not just our people but the public. That's who they want to deceive because they're the ones that, gonna, that, that they want to vote on these types of things. They're trying to deceive everyone. So I think that it needs to be looked at uh, internationally, our our plight, our cause, um, and I think that the issues the the issues of terra nullius has not been looked at in full. It's been looked at in, in the Marbo decision. Terra nullius was overturned in terms of legal property. In terms of the systems, the the white systems in this country, terra nullius has never been never been overturned. You look at the education system, the legal system, the the prison system, the edu the education system, all these different systems, they all still are based on the lie of terra nullius of our people not. Um, being here before, not having a connection to our country and not being the sovereign owners of this country prior to 1788, they don't acknowledge our law. They've never acknowledged our law and that's what they're scared of. If you look at when the term treaty, when the, the, the calls for treaty from our people started coming uh, in the late 70s, Uncle Kevin Gilbert and the mob down at the, the, the embassy started talking about a sovereign treaty. Malcolm Fraser, the Prime Minister of the time, Set, stated that he would negotiate with the National Aboriginal Conference, the NAC, on the issue of treaty, but the term treaty was too confronting for them. They did not want to deal with the word treaty. Treaty equals reparations, it equals justice, it equals the truth which they, they will run from. But that's when the term Makarata started being used. Because they asked the NAC to come up with a less confronting word in an Aboriginal language that they can use, and they've used that word Ever since then, it's the, the term treaty now that seems 
the way that it's um, the way that it's portrayed with, with uh, within the states. If you look at Victoria's done their started their treaty making process a couple of years ago, they, the Victorian government. I've read up on this, and it's it should not be that these terms should not be used. The term treaty should not be used. It's a loose agreement that can be legislated out of being with a stroke of a pen. It's, it's subject only to domestic laws by this country, which are based on the lie of terra nullius, racism, colonialism, and institutionalized genocide. So I will not be talking about treaty with a, with a corporate government until it severs ties with Britain completely, which has never happened. Um, I think if you look at, um, if you look at the, uh, under international law, if you look at the, the way sovereignty can be usurped from one group to another, there's three ways. There's conquest, which is war, declaring war, either exterminating the entire population or forcing the population into a treaty of surrender. The second way is cession, uh, which is a mob ceding, their, ceding parts of their country, of sovereignty over parts of their land, to give to the um, the other state, so that's through a treaty. Then the third way is settlement, which is basically terra nullius. So the land belongs to no one. There was no one in this country, which is what this country, the lie that this country is based on. Mm -hmm. And if you look at that, all these definitions in terms of the Australian context, you can see just by that it's that there is no legitimacy in this government and in the the usur usurping of Aboriginal sovereignty, which has never been ceded, never been usurped legally, and never could be, because we've never signed any document, signed our sovereignty away to any any uh, government, any to the Crown. We've, that's never been never been done. So that's that's the through the, the through the international definitions of it. I think that we have a case in that. And if you look at, also, if you look at the two. Um, the, if there's a dispute between of sovereignty between two separate nation states, the only ways that can be settled is through war, treaty, or going to the International Court of Justice and settling it through that. And that's the, for me, that's the only way I see our people going forward is by organising our nations, coming together, doing it our own way, creating our own government, or we'll sort of creating, not creating, but bringing back our government governance structures and modernising them and then go into the International Court of Justice. Because we, we do have a case, a lot of our elders have fought for this for a long time. Uncle Paul Coe's case in 1979, Coe versus the Commonwealth, that set the precedent for the Marpo decision and for every, for every act of sovereignty, every, every um, sort of, every protest, every, all our movements has been set from the precedence of our, our, our old people that have been doing it for that, for, for many decades now. So it needs to be uh, the treaty. The treaty making process needs to come from our own people, and it needs to be led through the nation. So each nation needs to come together. Um, I think that's. I think that's a part of that is decolonising. So we need to decolonise our nations. We need to get back to our own law, our own spirituality, and our own way of being. Because this Western system, if you look at our youth, if you look at the how lost they are. It's being, our youth are being led down the wrong path through this Western system that's destroying our people, destroying our culture. The first things they tried to take from our people was our religion and our culture because they knew those were the strong points. That's what kept us strong and that's what kept our culture and our, our people going for, for thousands and thousands of years, since time immemorial. So, we need to get back to reviving these systems, reviving our languages, culture, our spirituality. Um, I think that our, it's a, the, the issues, there's many different facets you can speak about in the issues of, of treaty, but I think the issue of sovereignty is intertwined with it, um, with, the issue of, with the issue of treaty, because both need to be addressed. Um, this government and has not will will not once will not address our you know our, our concerns about sovereignty and will not acknowledge it. So we need to go international. We need to organise our people 
and that's the, that's the only way I see us going forward. Um, I think that with the with the with the um, the decolonisation, I think it needs to be led by not just our our elders, but also working with every every person in our community, our elders, our young people, our middle-aged people. Everyone needs to be um, c contribute to the process. Um, I think, yeah, as I said earlier, I think it definitely it needs to be led by our people, and it needs to be done from a black perspective, because. Um, our people too long have been deceived and have been have been led down the wrong path through through the deception and through trusting this this government that has never done anything for us but attempt to destroy us completely. Um, if you look at our early political movements with um, the Australian Aboriginal Progressive Association, uh, Fred Maynard started that in 1924. If you look at their list of demands back then. And you look at the demands we're asking for today, nothing has changed. We want our lands to stop, in, stop taking our kids away, stop destroying our culture, stop mining our country, which is not yours, and stop the, stop the genocide. These demands have never been addressed in full. Um, and until they, until they are, until the issue of sovereignty is addressed, um, I think... We're still we're we're going to be in a in a similar position. So I just think we need to we need to unite as best we can. There's a lot of division in our community, which is which is being imposed on us because our 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 systems and our our law and our our people have lived in this land for for that for that amount of time with no evidence of of land wars, no um, no divide. It was we lived in a in a harmonious society, which you can't say that for any other part of this of this world. And if we can't learn anything, from, if, if if we can't learn anything from that, then there's, there's something really wrong because this is what has sustained us for that that amount of time. So I think we need to get back to decolonising, to looking at avenues of of going to the International Court of Justice, of going of, of bringing our plight on the international scene because in this um, within Australia it's not it's been it's been done before it's not we they're not going to acknowledge what we're doing they're not going to they're not going to change anything within our within this system it's based on lies based on racism colonialism the founding document the, the constitution is a is a white only racist constitution so and that's, that's still what they go and say. That's why they try to merge us into this constitution, to legitimise their illegitimate status in this country. So I believe we need to go international. When this, it's proven, when this country is shamed out on an international scene, that's when they start, bells start ringing, and that's when they start backpedalling and starting to, to think that that's when our, our issues need to be... Um, looked at so also when we when we t when we look at their economy um we need to be we need to be standing up for country so we need to be organizing our mobs and coming together and, and helping our neighbors like we used to do our people would always our, our nations would always help each other so we need to we need to look at what's happened on our on our country i live in newcastle when i drive through through a place called singleton it makes me it makes me almost cry to see our country, the country out there, being destroyed, being having its heart ripped out by by coal, by mining, it's disgusting. And anyone who supports that, yeah, it's they need to see it for themselves because it's disgusting. Our people, our people need to come together and fight against these things. And I think that's we need to we need to bring back the the um the song lines, the the connections between each mob. That's with treaties between each other. So I think that's our first step is that is to complete treaties within each other after we've decolonised and um, brought each mob together. So I think we need to, we need to look at that um, to fight for things such as against mining, uh, about reviving culture, ceremonies, um, law, all these sorts of things. That's what we need to look at. Um, yeah, that's what I'd like to say. Thanks.